A tornado touched down in wind back in late March, leveling many homes all across town, killing four people and injuring dozens of others. The eight and back towards the Strawberry River as it heads gracious. back towards to the west, or towards the east, excuse me. That is some really bad damage. Please pray for our town, and we appreciate everybody and the calls already, but when Arkansas needs your prayers right now. I'm on one. Where's your emergency? Westside Middle School. That's it. We have a teacher down and several students down. But just days before, we had special coverage on the 25th anniversary of the Westside School shooting. K8 News looked at the archives and had interviews with people who lived through the tragedy for the first time ever. Luckily, I was very close to Westside School uh, when that call came in, so I was able to be there in just you know a matter of two minutes. I the first female governor of Arkansas, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, took office at the beginning of the year. Her education overhaul, the LEARNS Act, took effect in August after multiple rulings. The controversial act raised teacher pay, repealed the Fair Dismissal Act, and more. Many of our schools had to adjust this year. Right now, we're kind of in that wait and see mode. We're trying to figure out, you know, we're, we're waiting for guidance. Uh, we're... Uh, we have a plan. Sticking with the governor, her office and other state leaders announced that Syngenta Seed in Bay had to pay $280,000 for not reporting that they were owned by China. Clay County State Senator Blake Johnson was passionate when passing the recent law. We don't need to allow our enemies to control the land that we feed, clothe ourselves, and, and build the future. Security ramped up in April with a hearing for President Joe Biden's son in Independence County. It's kind of a historical thing to be taking place here in little Batesville, Arkansas. Hunter Biden had a court date connected to a paternity test for a child he had with London Roberts of Batesville. We are ready. We'll be ready inside and outside the courtroom and inside and outside the courthouse, both. In October, tragedy struck again. This time on Highway 67, investigators say a field fire caused heavy smoke to block out any visibility, leading to a 15-vehicle deadly pileup one afternoon. We spoke to a man who had to drive through the area that day. Feeling pretty blessed to see my kids this afternoon, you know. Prayers go out to the families that were that were destroyed today. The crash has led lawmakers to discuss new ways to prevent this from happening again. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm upset. Um, I'm saddened, of course, for the loss of life and the, the injuries that happened. Just last month, a local police officer lost his job after an incident with a side-by-side -side killed the driver. Go ahead and notify the coroner. Christopher Schull was working for Bay Police when he hit Stephen Kyle McMaster's UTV with his patrol unit. Shull was cleared of any wrongdoing, but was then fired from Bay Police, something people in Bay had been asking for. Yes, they were better without the officer, so another thing doesn't happen like this. Somebody doesn't lose their loved one over something like that. Arguably, one of the most memorable moments of the year was when two people led police on a chase across Jonesboro in May. It began on Nestle Road, but this is video of when it crossed into Southwest Drive from Highland Drive. So I was in a mix of like worried, scared, and just didn't know what was going to happen after they drove away. The chase took troopers around I-555, where the car eventually ended up in a drainage ditch, and the suspects took off with a gun into the Windover Heights neighborhood, putting it on lockdown. 50-year-old Timothy Lynn Davis of Lake City was in jail on a $50,000 bond. His trial has been pushed back to late January.